Welcome to The Global Pulse, a short video series where our experts break down a trending topic in international business and why it matters to you. It's time to talk about something very important on a global scale, and that is sports. And sports right now, a lot's going on. Today of all days is the Super Bowl. And so for you Super Bowl fans out there, enjoy the game. It should be a good one. And also at the same time, it's happening is that winter games in Beijing. And so it's 2022 and it's time for the Winter Games. And so you might be wondering, well, how does it all play out the economics when it comes to the Olympics? And in particular, who's collecting all this money, right? So the outfit that handles the Olympics is called the International Olympic Committee or IOC. And IOC wields a lot of power. They have something in terms of content that everybody wants in the land of sports and that's the Olympics. And so when you have something like that as a product, Folks are lined up and they want to be a part of it. Now, it's not surprising that when it comes to revenue streams, their major revenue stream is broadcasting rights. And we're talking about 73% of what they take in in terms of revenue depends on those contracts. And those are media contracts that companies lock into, like NBC, that last for years or multi-year contracts. Now, that covers a pretty good chunk, three quarters of their income. And another huge chunk deals with what we call sponsorship. And these are companies that want to advertise. That's roughly 18% of their revenue coming in the door. Once again, they're playing the same game. It's called a multi-year contract that you lock into depending on the size of your firm or organization. So for these games, there are five tiers of sponsorship. At the very top tier, you're called a worldwide Olympic partner. And this year in total for the Winter Games in Beijing, there are 13 major players. And we're looking at companies like Coke, Intel, Samsung, Toyota, Visa, Procter & Gamble, or P&G, if you will, and Omega. So that's pretty cool. And you get exclusive rights and you get those rings and you get to use it in your advertising. So a lot of companies are very keen on that, but you pay hundreds of millions of dollars to do so. Now, the second tier is what we call the official partners of Beijing. In total, there are 11. And all of these entities are Chinese-based firms. As an example, the Bank of China. The third tier is what we call the official sponsors of Beijing 2022. And there are a total of 11 firms there and they're all Chinese once again. So an example here would be Tsingtao Beer. The fourth tier are called official exclusive suppliers of Beijing 2022, a total of nine. And these once again are all Chinese firms. However, some have roots in America. So we have like Mars China, Snickers, that's where they fall on the fourth tier. And finally, the fifth tier is what we call the official suppliers of Beijing 2022, a total of 13 firms there. Once again, all Chinese. To give you an example, PwC China. Now, when you're in the top tier and you get those exclusive rights, they don't come cheap. You've got to lock into a multi-year contract that can last up to 10 years. And so it covers several Olympics down the line. And you might be sitting there going saying, well, OK, I get it. If I'm the IOC, yeah, I'd like to lock you in and have a guaranteed revenue stream. And I don't want to have to go through this sort of, well, we got to choose this partner, this partner, that sort of thing. And why not? They wield, as I said, a lot of power and a lot of leverage when it comes to the contract deal. So they're saying that if you want a part of this, you're going to have to lock in to do so. Now, that works for them. And of course, if I'm the firm, if I'm a major player, I might also be thinking, well, if I lock in at a decent rate now, as we look to the future, things will get more expensive. And therefore, if I can get a good rate, crunch our numbers, this might be the play. Now, of course, all this hinges on the fact that people will still be in love with the Olympics. Now, I don't think that's going to change. And therefore, going forward, this model will probably endure. But at the end of the day, it's kind of intriguing when I think back to my law school training. When you set up a contract, it is in written form and it represents, in the phraseology of the law, a meeting of the minds. So we have party A and party B that sit down saying, this is something that works for me, something works for you. We both crunch our numbers. And if it makes economic sense, we go for it. So enjoy the games. Now that you know how it's broken down in terms of actual revenue streams and sponsorship and the like. And once again, let us all partake in this amazing thing called sports. Take care now.